Good morning, guys. Kylo Matlock here with Selkirk Marine. Hey, I've got a fantastic boat to show you guys today. I'm so excited to get this boat out onto the water. We got a 290 Sea Rayer with a medium cab and tons of custom options. So I can't wait to walk you through it. That easy bow roller. Now the reason that it's all big and wide like that is because there's a drum winch in the bow of this boat, which I'll get to that whenever we get inside. But you can see it went with the two spot, two flood, uh, rigid pods up on the bow there. Coming down the side here, dual rub rails. Now he did this boat full charcoal metallic, which I was a little bit hesitant about at first, but it looks amazing. Super stoked on how it turned out. That anodizing just absolutely pops with this boat. Got it back up here. The boat's so big, I can't hardly get it all on the video. Coming down the side here, you can see the, uh, you can definitely tell there's a medium cab on it. Got that bigger window, not just the seven inch cigar window. Um, it's on a triple axle trailer. There's one of the first custom options we haven't done yet. It's a purple R. So this guy's theme is uh, gonna be that same color. All the graphics that he does on his boat are gonna match that R. Gonna look pretty killer. Powered it with uh, twin Suzuki 250 outboards. He's got main engine controls at the front helm and at the second station, so it'll be a uh, great setup for him. Let's hop up inside and check that out. So here you can see how immaculate this boat looks. This is fantastic. So full welded in diamond plate aft deck. Uh, we'll start in the middle here. Went with the tackle station in the middle. So he's got his uh, five rod holders there. Cutting board up top. All storage over here. Open both of these. You've got drawers, spots for your pliers, lures, whatever you want to put there. Um, these little slots here so that you can put knives in there. And then all these are drawers that come out. You can fill with whatever you want to put in there. This side, these rollers are to put uh, spools of line on. And then all those are planar, plano box storage. Um, so they are built to the exact specifications of the size that they make plano boxes in. So you just buy that size of box, put whatever you want in it, slide it all in there, good to go. There's another custom option. So usually, um, while well, standard, you get one, dime, one downrigger pad in the back. Um, a lot of people will go with the extended four position downrigger pads so that you get four this guy said, nope, I want rails all the way up the side of my boat with four downrigger pads per side and burn winds in every downrigger pad. So that's what he got. Um, you can see that we've got four rod holders. He did get eight. Uh, they're just not here yet, so they will go in these other spots. Coming back here, he went with the transom mount bait tank, have you, as you have seen in previous videos. Um, so as you know, this thing is awesome. Um, for those of you that haven't seen our previous videos, it's rounded on both ends. Um, those of you that tuna fish know that if you have a square box, um, your anchovies are dead by the time you get to your fishing grounds. There's your jet rail in the back that sprays water, circulates all day long. There's an overflow uh, pipe in there. So once the water gets up in here, um, it starts overflowing and then that just circulates all day. Keeps your anchovies alive. <clears throat> and then right here behind these latches, you've got drawers um, these drawers do get kind of wet uh, they're not dry storage but they work great for you know when you're swapping gear you can throw a lure in there that might be dirty or anything like that uh, and then just spray it out when you're done uh, this is going to be a new standard on 2025 models um, so we went ahead and threw it on here for him this has always just been an open space um, and so We've had John the last two years has decided to put a cutting board there. 
Um, and every time that we went out, that seems to be when you're on the water where you end up uh, flaying, not flaying, but cleaning your fish before you put them in the fish bag on ice. Um, that way, all the guts and everything, you just grab your wash down, spray it right off the back, and you're good to go. Uh, so we got a nice cutting board there. Coming around here, here's second station. Um, so he's got his main engine controls, his troll mode. Um, that's for the Suzuki's. So you've got port and starboard, start and stop and trim separately. Um, if you do it here, as you know, it trims both engines the same. Got your uh, kill switch there. Or key switch. And then there's both Suzuki screens. Um, he does have main engine autopilot. So there is your Reactor 40 S2 smart pump. Um, so that holds all your uh, power steering fluid in there uh, when, you know, whenever it's activated by the computer. Um, that is in line. There's T's in your all of your hydraulic steering components um, that then run through this and back out. So then it uh, moves your motor for you. Those autopilots are awesome. Another Garmin screen up top here. Got a uh, 1242. Uh, we do a lot of 1042s. This guy wanted a little bit bigger. Uh, still button control, so it's just a 12 inch button control screen instead of a uh, touch screen like the front one is. He went with dual uh, aft deck lights. So he's got one up in each corner. He's got his uh, 12 rod rocket launcher arch. So put lots of rods up there. You can put them down here as well. Got rod trees on the side. Plenty of storage whenever you're out in the ocean. That way you can bring different rods for every different fishery that you're gonna hit that day. Coming inside here. He went with the uh, welded interior. So all of the seat boxes are welded in place. Um, he just wanted bench seats because he does plan on hopefully chartering with this boat one day. So he wanted as much, much seating as possible. So right here, you've got your uh, storage under your feet, your storage under the entire bench seat. Um, they are split in case you just wanna take one or the other side off. Same thing right here. Went with the stand-up head. So you can see the non-skid goes all the way through there. You got your toilet, uh, mace rater switch back there, your valve, all that good jazz. And then you can see there's snaps all the way around the window. Um, it does come with privacy curtains for every window, so whenever you're doing your business, nobody can see you. Then he also upgraded to the S5 suspension seats. So you can see there a pneumatic shock in there. Um, so it comes with a pump, kind of like a, a bike tire pump, if you will. Um, and that's how you control, you know, how stiff it is. He also went with a fusion stereo system. And so he went with the upgraded version that is uh, screenless. So he doesn't have a head unit. It's all controlled through his Garmin screen. Um, so he's got two six inch speakers up there. He's got a four inch speaker in each back corner. And then he said, you know, I want a little more even than that. So that would be a 12 inch sub in a box that we customly built for him. All carpeted, ported in the back. Sounds amazing. Um, back here behind this bench seat, sorry, mount of the amp, so it's full fusion system. This thing rocks your socks off. Coming up here, here's your GHC 50. This run, this is the brains to your reactor 40. Um, got your trim tabs, fuel gauge, uh, both engine screens right here. Got both of those. There's your key switch. Um, all your switch panels are right there. Got your main engine controls. Again, uh, port and starboard, start and stop and trim separately. Troll mode. And then his touchscreen 1242 XSV is right there. Here is his Garmin 
uh, 215 VHF. Got that right there. Um, he's also went with a diesel heater. Um, so the heater's mounted behind that carpeted plate there. Um, he's got a vent right there, another vent up there on the dash. Control module's right here. Let's go check out the bow. Open that up. So this will be your drum winch box. So as you know, standard um, is the one with the two lids and that solid piece in the middle where your Lumar will get mounted. Um, and then it sucks the rope down in there. This one, there is an easy four drum winch mounted down inside of there. Pretty spectacular. So that's what that giant uh, bow roller is needed for, is the drum winch that is mounted inside of his bow. Got his Garmin radar up, Garmin radar up there. Black Shakespeare antenna. Let's see another upgrade that we've are also done to our boats. This ring is no longer painted. This is black anodized, so no more of that salt getting under there and peeling everything up or just getting scratched up by your boots and. Wow, opening kind of by itself. It's because we started using a uh, shock system in there, so it is assisted. You no longer have to lift up this heavy thing all by yourself. Got a giant carpeted storage box in here. Carpeted storage under both welded in seat boxes as well. So, also, got shore power. There's your breaker box right there, or your breaker panel, I mean. Um, he also went with an extra Marine Co. plug unit. So, this is one unit that's got a 12 volt and a USB system in the same deal. Put those right here so that his clients can charge their cell phones or cameras, whatever they want to charge. There's one on each side. So yeah, I think that's about the gist of this boat as far as what I can do without it getting on the water. So I hope you liked the walkthrough video that I did on this 290 Sea Raider. It's an absolute fantastic setup and I'm super stoked for this customer. So. This boat's headed down to California to the Bay Area, so if you're from there, you may see it out there. So, until next time, we'll see you later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh,